virtual reality. Once the far-off dream of tech geeks envisioning a theoretical wedgie-free dimension, this vision of the future is now everyday technology, with most headset owners not even excited enough to put the thing on more than a couple times a year. Where is the sci-fi fantasy we were promised? The limitless simulated realities of Ready Player One? The hypersaturated nightmare of Spy Kids 3D game over? When can I leave my life behind and go be in one of those? It's not hard to imagine the appeal, why someone today would romanticize an escape to the metaverse. Whether you're afraid of the direction the real world is heading, you're still nervous to even go outside since the pandemic, or maybe your house warped to the jungle while your front door was open and a pretty huge tiger walked into your house and now you locked yourself in your home office and are trying to be quiet so it doesn't hear you. I think it's asleep. My goal is to use my Facebook Quest 2 headset in the open-ended gameplay and social features of one of VR's flagship apps, VR Chat, to experience the dopamine blasting highs we've seen whole generations of kids get absorbed in in these movies. The games that turn people into obsessives, unwilling to return to real life unless they absolutely have to. I want that kind of transcendent experience. So let's live out every exhilarating gameplay moment in VR Chat as I ask myself, Am I feeling about how the people in the movie felt? To help me with this experiment, for some recreations, I'll be assisted by a team of VR volunteers joining me on livestream, and for others, I'll be wandering the VR wastes on my own, looking for true, unforced moments of connection with strangers. First, let's talk about Game Over, the quite ironically named virtual reality game from Spy Kids 3D. Game over. Here's everything we know about it. It's the biggest virtual reality game in history, releasing exclusively on VBOX and rated A for all. The game feels real to its players, and it's theorized that just about every kid in the world will be playing it once it releases, thanks to its creator, the toy maker, promising untold riches, toys, and prizes for beating level five. That's a ploy so he can control children's minds. Our spy kid, Junie, has to make it to the end of the game to defeat him. When Junie enters the game, he looks exactly like he does in real life, and I'm able to simulate this technology pretty well using a free tool called Ready Player Me, which lets you build an avatar from any photo. And I'm entering the game a little dressed up because presumably once I'm in the metaverse, I'll need to get a job and earn my place. Right, Mr. Zuckerberg? <laughs> He's always listening. Facebook sucks. Instagram rules. Let's give it a try. Oh my god, really? Eh, yeah, pretty much. The first thing that happens to Junie after entering level 1 of Game Over is he's attacked by pogo toads, which are frogs on pogo sticks. This is a silly idea because frogs are already known for jumping, but imagine if they could jump even higher. Kind of a chilling thought. So let's get all my VR assistants dressed up in frog avatars and do our best to recreate the attack. Please! No, please. No, I'm sorry. No, don't, I regret this. I regret this. A tough little kid named Arnold saves Junie from his pogo toad situation, so we will also simulate a hero rising to save me from my immersive and overwhelming encounter. No, business, you motherfuckers. Oh. Oh. Thank you. What do I call you? I was never <laughs> So was that scary? Thrilling? VR does have that powerful sense of place, and the sensation that someone is in your face, talking or ribbiting right in your ear, can be genuinely replicated. I was mostly laughing during the experiment, but that was truly kind of a fear response. Also, the chimp with the gun was a bit more Lawnmower Man than Spy Kids 3D, but we'll get to that later. Soon, Junie enlists the help of a smart kid and a cool kid to get him to level 2, but they trick him into launching himself to the moon. So can you get sent to the moon as a prank in VR chat? Yes. It happened to me. This one's cool. Oh. Hey, fucker. Hello. Hi, officer. Uh, just can we make this quick? I'm trying to film a video today, so... I'm not here to fight. I'm not here to give you any grief. You can stand down. In fact, stand up. Okay. I'm here to bury the hatchet between us. Is that okay with you? Great. I'm all ears, ma'am. Good. I have a cool new world that I want to take you to. I think it'll help us understand each other much better. Great. This feels like a new leaf for you. 
I mean, do you feel like you're kind of reckoning with past behavior? Let's not talk about that here. Let's go into the new world. Yeah, absolutely. After you. Wow. It looks so small from up here. I can see why this is a place you come to to reflect and talk stuff through. What's Shut up? the fuck up, dude. Did, did you really uh, believe me? Why would I ever want to bury the hatchet with you, man? Only hatchet I fucking bury is in your goddamn head. Okay. I tricked you. Have you even seen Spy uh, Kids 3, dude? Don't you fucking talk to me about Spy Kids 3. Of course I've seen Spy Kids 3. I'm a YouTuber. You I make videos about that me. shit. You will it's a, it's a shitty me, movie okay? from 15 years ago. Of course I've fucking seen it. Let's hop over to The Oasis, Ready Player One's world-defining VR title from Gregarious Games. Players use a bare minimum of gloves and a headset to interact with the endless competitive and social spaces of The Oasis, but they also can have chest-mounted cameras for face tracking, omnidirectional treadmills for movement, and suits that let them feel pain or pleasure. Our hero Wade Watts believes the Oasis is a fair meritocracy because there are enough random power-ups scattered around by the creator that anyone of any background can get ahead. But there's also this in-game store where you can pay money for power-ups, so it's kind of like how capitalism is fair because, you know, we have the lottery. One of the first experiences we see the Oasis offer is a tropical vacation without leaving your home. This is a super appealing one and a super easy one to test. Can you relax on the beach in VR and leave all your real world problems behind? Wow. This is pretty nice. I can see chilling out in here, taking a load off. Ah! ah! Oh my god, dude. Not now with this tiger stuff, all right? So that's kind of a specific situation to me, granted. But even if you can replicate the sun in your eyes and the breeze in your face, I don't see how we could ever make it feel like a real swimming experience. We could actually be in water, but then the headset would get a electrocute you and you'd die? So that might work for a dying experience. Wade Watts, played by the incomparable Leo, don't forget to look up the actor's name, is in pursuit of the three keys hidden as secret Easter eggs that will award him ownership of gregarious games and the Oasis itself. The first key he attempts to find is hidden in the Copper Key Race, the fastest, most dangerous race in the whole game world. Him and countless other gunters, their term for egg hunters, have never been able to get past King Kong to finish it. So, can you blast through a thrilling high fidelity race, dodging all kinds of harrowing obstacles? Luckily, someone in VR chat attempted to recreate the exact race from the film. So how's that experience? Okay, so everybody go grab your vehicle and let's fucking race like they do in the Oasis, bro. God, what is that horrible sound? Okay, we're gonna start racing and hopefully we get away from the sound. Three, two, one, key race. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, I can't stop doing 360s. We're not quite there yet. Back in Spy Kids, Junie, still trapped on the moon, is informed that he can bring in one person from the outside to help him on his journey. He chooses his grandpa, who is instantly zorped in and doesn't know where he is. Pretty fantastical, but surely through modern technology it should be somewhat achievable to invite your grandparents into a free, downloadable game. Hey grandma, how are you? Do you remember those uh, virtual reality goggles we got you for Christmas? Where you put them on and you can walk around inside a game? Yeah. No. No, email is something else. Yeah, I've been cleaning my room. Listen, it should be a friend request under the social tab, okay? No, see, that's email again. I gotta let you go. It's been nice talking to you, Grandma. Okay, love you. <sighs> she says hi. To escape the moon, Junie competes against a gamer girl, Demetra, in what's known as the Robocon. He defeats her with the classic animated move of running around in a circle so fast your opponent gets dizzy and then you easily knock him over. So can you control a giant avatar and have a thrilling gladiator battle for the masses? And can you do the run around get dizzy thing from cartoons? Lean down, I need to hop on. Here, here you are. Thank you so much. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna get tangled up in the fucking cord. <laughs> Yes! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> I can't spot it! All in all, it works pretty well. Although something they never consider in cartoons is that running around in a circle made me really dizzy too. 
so it really comes down to whoever pokes their opponent first. Wade, still unable to conquer the Copper Key race, goes to gather clues at the Halliday Museum, a massive structure where the creator of the Oasis is memorialized and worshipped. Is the creator of VR chat similarly idolized by the players? Does anyone in game even know who made the VR world we're living in? How about we figure it out Jay Leno style by ambushing everyday people who are just trying to have a good time without being harassed by an entertainer who's concealing the joke from them. And he named it after a crime. Do you know who made VR chat? No. no. Probably some like old guy. <laughs> I think it was like two people or some shit. Like, it was like two people like like thinking about it. That's what I know. Who do you think invented VR chat? Who created this world we're in? Who's our god? Probably Todd Howard since it's so buggy. Oh, Probably shit. Todd Howard. I have no clue. Does yeah. anyone know who made VR chat? Who created it? Yeah, my my dad made VR chat. He he works for Microsoft. That is so crazy. It was Peter Griffin's dad. Wade eventually discovers that the solution to the Copper Key race is rather than to go forward, to drive backwards. It's a clever tie-in to Ready Player One's core theme of nostalgia, and how it's really cool, and there's nothing worth digging into about it. So what happens if you take one of VR Chat's flagship racing experiences and rush backwards from the starting line? Are there secrets to be unearthed? Oh my god, this is so slow. Excuse me. Excuse me. Nope. Now back on Earth, Junie enters the game over mega race, the fastest, most dangerous race in the whole game world. And after how the last one went, we're skipping it. <laughs> Something viewers may not notice about Ready Player One is that it's full of references to 1980s movies and music, despite being set in 2045. But would players of a cutting edge VR game really care about pop culture from 60 years ago? Let's find out. What do you guys think of the Beverly Hillbillies, huh? Cool stuff. Hey, do you got any songs from uh, I Can Get It For You whole Wholesale on the radio there? Uh, no, nah. but we got beers. Hey. Yo, hey, the driving theater, yeah. Yo, I'm hoping they're playing Lawrence of Arabia in here, am I right? You guys like that one? Yeah, uh, hold on. Hold on, guys, I'll be right back. There he goes. Uh, we got any love for I Can Get It For You Wholesale in here, the musical? If you need an yeah, item. I know. Yeah, no, I'm gonna give you five seconds to run. Uh, okay, sorry. I, I, I did, I did Hold on, I actually, I have something to say, actually. You guys remember the mashed potato dance? That was pretty epic. Remember that? That was cool. I have something to say as well. <laughs> Oh, what's up? You're half bald. Pop your head. I know. Oh, fuck each. Okay, nobody say anything. Please, nobody say anything. Please, there's a tiger in my house. Please. Please, I'm begging you. Oh my god. No, my house is warping. Now my house is warping. My house is warping away. Greetings, influencer. I'm Radar. I'll be your guide through the onboarding process, teaching you some of the perks and features that get people excited about our service. Great. Which service? And where am I? Only the home of the safest, fastest VPN in the universe. Welcome to Nord Planet. Wow. That blue sun feels extra close and hot. <laughs> Don't worry. It's perfectly safe. Much like our new threat protection feature that protects you from malware and trackers, even when you're not connected to a VPN. I bet you could use that. You'd probably go to some freaky websites, huh? No, just the normal ones. Hey, no judgment here. Keeping your data private? That's what we do. We encrypt your data so hard we can't even see it. Not that it's too hard to figure out in your case. <laughs> <laughs> do I look like a... Do I look like a pervert? <laughs> it will all come out in this game. Hey look, it's Nord City. Our capital hub remotely operates trillions of servers across the universe, including over 5,000 on Earth alone. So any Earthling can connect to one convenient to them. Yeah, so you can make websites think you're connecting from somewhere else, right? Yep, like you could access British Netflix, which has uncut gems on it right now. Yeah, yeah, well I don't have Netflix, but. Sure, 
But that's just an example you can share the many conveniences of having access to a VPN. Yeah, but I mean, I don't have Netflix. We're just gonna keep it moving. So why do your people care about running virtual private networks? It's the Nord way. It's the will of the divine. But Nord is an Earth thing. I thought it was called NordVPN because they're like Nordic countries. Nope, this guy's the Nord. What? What's up? The Nord is the seed from which all life on this planet was formed. Now it handles our online chat support. And it has no need for food or sustenance, so it's available 24-7. But it still has feelings, so don't be rude to it or anything. How can I help you today? Did it say HLEP? Yeah, okay. Sue him for making a freaking typo. You're perfect, right? No, I mean it. <laughs> okay. All that's left now is to get you scanned so we can generate your promo code. Oh, cool. I I never wondered how they decide these. And there we go. Looks like yours will be nordvpn.com slash leovader. Make sure to put the link in the description and have your audience use it for massive savings. I'll get access to NordVPN for less than a cup of Glarknar a month. Yeah, great. That's, uh, that's cheap? Hey, ma'am. I don't know what you consider cheap, or what you've been paying for Glarknar. Oh, uh, hold on. The scan says you're human? Okay, so our son actually did irreparable damage to your skin, so that's my bad. <laughs> um, oh my Nord, what is that? Did you bring that here? No, I've never seen that on Earth. That's like a crazy alien. <laughs> ah, warping away. <laughs> uh, NordVPN.com slash Leo Vader, you said? That's right, link in the description. Call in the airstrike! Aw, oh, no. I am just gonna... Oh, right, great. Back to Junie's journey. The game challenges the kids to choose their best little kid player as well as their strongest little kid player, and then surprises them by making the two fight to the death. When the strong one, Arnold, uses his brute masculine strength to take down almost all of Junie's health points, Demetra, now his love interest, tags in and saves his life. But then Arnold one-shots her by destroying the platform she's on, which is some total bullshit. So first off, can you fight in a 1v1 with real stakes? I'm gonna kick your ass. Okay, let's have a fair fight, all right? Get over here, you. <laughs> no, stop it. Oh! <laughs> My health! <laughs> My health points! Take this, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. The physical pain was imaginary, but the fear was legitimate. Look at that thing. But then what about a partner tagging in and being killed unfairly? Boom. W wait, do Think you hear that? Up. Hold huh? on. Huh. Are you tagging you in? some two punk? Look over there, over the edge. There's a power up. He has a one up mushroom. Yeah, no, don't do there. it! No, don't do it! I'm it's not, not right! Either. He's punking I'm not even you! Pulling around here. Bam! Gotcha! <laughs> no! <laughs> See, I always win. How could you do this? <laughs> I got your, uh, whatchamacallit, girlfriend. This was a similar level of betrayal to what's experienced in the movie, which is to say I never really felt the need to address it again or stop hanging out with the guy who did it. Wade and his love interest, Artemis, now gunting for the second egg, head to a nightclub where their romantic dance is interrupted by the bad guys of the movie who storm the club in a hail of gunfire. So firstly, can you go out for a night of dancing at the club in VR? Of course, and it's actually really fun. Yeah! <laughs> yes, do the worm, Iron Giant. I'm having so much fun. But can that nightclub experience be ruined by the invasion of players cosplaying as a private militia? You know, theoretically. Oh. Yo! You wanna stop Ooh, firing? We're getting down in here. Yeah, chill out. We're having a good time. Chill out. Come on, smoke yeah, one. Man. Smoke one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me get you a drink. Chill, chill the fuck out. Yes. 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 Party. 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 Yo, we got the Spot Kids guy DJ. Yeah. We partied together all night long, making memories I'll cherish for the rest of my life. We hung over in the club, man. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm sorry, God. everyone. I'm sorry. We partied oh, too Lord. hard. I'm sorry oh, about that. Guys, Why? I just have one what more thing to say. What? DJ, what? turn what? that shit what? back on. Yeah! yeah. 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 Making machines for the thing. I've been in the game for 10 years. 
into level 5 of Game Over, the kids find themselves hanging 10 down a lava river, and they have a quick conversation about it for the geeks and gamers in the crowd. Why is it that every video game has lava in it? Technically, that's not true. There's no lava in Halo. It's a good enough point, though there's also no lava in Tapper. Unless maybe you're filling the glasses with lava because your customers really want to consume lava. That's a thing. And to be honest, I do kind of get it. So, in VR chat, can you eat the lava? <laughs> uh, do surfing on it. Stay focused! All I could find was the Sonic themed rail grinding level, and let me tell you, it was pretty exciting. Okay, this is pretty sick. All right. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, big turn coming up. Okay, all right, I'm getting sick. Oh, oh, we gotta disengage the program. Disengage the program. Turn it off, please. Please stop going. Meanwhile, the Oasis gang enter The Shining, fighting the Room 237 old lady sub-boss and hanging 10 down the Blood River. That represents trauma or whatever the fuck. It's cool, though. What the, what the river scene's cool. While I couldn't find any maps based on The Shining, let's ask the real question. Can you actually go inside your favorite movies in VR chat? You can try. Here she is, the fucking Titanic. I'm gonna do it. I'm king of the world. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's like get down on the ground, speed. dude. Oh my god. Get down on the ground. That's some of the lamest shit I've ever fucking seen, dude. Sorry, I'll get out of your way. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I'm king of the world. Damn it. Preparing for the battle for the third and final key, Wade broadcasts a message summoning everyone in the Oasis to come fight for what's right. There's a question of how he broadcasts to everyone in the Oasis, but it tracks that the most successful Gunther would have a huge following and be well respected. Who's your favorite Gunther to follow, for example, could be a conversation in the universe. Oh my Gunter streaming! The two movies share that thread of in-game legends the other players look up to, both even starting with GU. Spy Kids 3D has the characters on the lookout for the guy, the dude from the poster who is said to be the only one who can get through level 5. When they finally meet the man who introduces himself as the guy, he's surprisingly, jarringly killed off immediately. It's a clever tie-in to Spy Kids' core theme that there are no gods or kings. All we have is each other, and nothing will ever truly be hopeless until we forget that. So does VR Chat have legendary characters? Well, there's a VR Chat Legends wiki that seems to be full of role players and streamers that belong to very specific communities. It also includes Cyberchimp, which again seems like a Lawnmower Man thing, which again we're not getting to yet. The legends I know are creators like Jar, whose name you'll see pop up as the maker of some of VR Chat's most popular worlds. Does that make them like a god here? Maybe. All I know is God and Jar, they both invented murder. Wade's final battle alongside everyone in the Oasis has me wonder if you can move people in games so much that they'll fight for a righteous cause. And perhaps the most important test yet, can you inspire the populace to fight for what's right? Uh, thanks everybody for being here, for gathering here today. <laughs> uh, you're all my favorite characters. Hear me out! Hear me out! Who do you really want to kill, me or the... Uh, you. Uh, who's the bad? Who's the bad guy of VR chat? Those who don't honor the other players. Cletus, that's exactly right. We here are gamers of honor, are we not? He has yes. A, yes. 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 And what is a gamer of honor to hate more? <laughs> I have something for you, Lenny. Evil gamers. You got this, dude. Don't worry. Don't did, you, did you all see that? Don't tell Carl. Don't tell Carl about this. It's okay, Homer. Holy shit. Lost my train of thought. You were asking who we, who's the bad guy? Who do we hate? Yeah. Who do we hate? Oh, cookies. I'm sorry, that's fucking me up. There's some kind of god version of Lenny from The Simpsons. I think if that guy didn't show up, I probably could have. When the big battle ensues, we see shots of gamers running around outside, navigating the in-game battlefield on the street with their VR headsets on. So can you run around outside in VR without slamming into anyone or getting obliterated by a car? Maybe you should test that one. 
Similarly, after finishing his big battle, Juni exits VR looking almost confused to find where he is, pushing his grandfather's wheelchair and surrounded by his intel team. So can you exit VR while doing something else without noticing? It happens more than you'd think. Haha, <laughs> got your ass. <laughs> Whose car is this? Now out of the game, Juni meets the kids he was playing with in Game Over, who turn out to be the opposite of their in-game personality. The nerdy kid isn't smart, the cool kid isn't cool, and the tiny strong kid isn't really that strong in real life. <laughs> what? No. Is that the case in VR chat too? Are these people really who they pretend to be? Are you Godzilla in real life or just in VR chat? I'm Godzilla in real life. Oh, cool. So how close are we to these experiences? Genuinely, not far off. The sense of presence in VR chat is totally there, and it's one of those technical experiences that just feels like magic when it works. Hanging out with friends remotely is always the most fun in VR, just hopping between VR chat social spaces and deception games. In that sense, it's more fun than these fantasies even show. The thrill isn't competing in massive gun battles or violent car races, it's being able to laugh and react and play off the actual body language of your friend a thousand miles away. On the other hand, when it comes to the immersion and obsessiveness that makes the rest of the world fade away, I don't think we're there and I do not know if we ever will be. VR has some much cooler, more impressive and immersive experiences than VR chat, obviously, and no one is throwing their worldly possessions away for a life in the virtual world. The reality, for most people, is that it will always be more appealing to plop down on your couch at the end of a long day rather than stand in your VR space and put all this shit on. And this is coming from someone who really loves and believes in VR. Will the situation be different when you can feel the sensations in game? When video game, say, make you nut? Perhaps. In fact, we should consider, are the players of Ready Player One all hopping into sex servers off screen. And that's why they're so addicted to the Oasis and they're kind of just pretending to be super into the gun games and the other crap too. I think it's absolutely what's going on. And that's the message of this video. Take care. I forgot to say anything about NordVPN. And hey, what about Lawnmower Man? The flowers for Algernonian tail of a humble groundskeeper accidentally turned into a supervillain by the power of virtual reality gaming. Can you really be made smarter by blasting strobing visuals into your eyes for months until you eventually gain the ability to pull power from an electric dimension into real life, which allows you to manifest 3D visuals, read people's thoughts, and move objects with your mind, overall becoming a kind of cyber Christ? Can that really happen? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't feel any different. <sighs> it's you. It's me. And final question. Can you train an animal for war using a visceral VR combat simulation like the monkey in the movie? Just strap this on. I've got the Elite headset, so it should get real tight on you. Real snug. Are you sure? Have you tried Half-Life Alex? That's a no. That's fine. I'm just glad the tiger didn't hurt you, bud. If anything, you look cleaner. My god, though, that thing in this room. Thank god it didn't touch anything. Just the way I like it.